we will continue our lesson today on electrical circuit. Our focus on this particular lesson will be circuit elements and catch off law, including Ohm's law. We'll start by talking about lumped parameter circuit model. This is an electrical circuit that is fully characterized by the elements it contains and how the elements are interconnected. Wires are perfect conductors as we have discussed in previous teachings and they cannot accumulate charge, they cannot dissipate energy. They only conduct charge or energy from one point to another. And they are not just conductors, they are perfect conductors. As you can see from these arrows, these are lumped elements. Okay, these are lumped elements, this is an element, this is an element, this is an element, and then we have energy that can be lumped within all of these, these elements. This point is usually referred to as the node. It is a point where two or more circuit elements meet or are connected. We have talked about ideal and independent sources, which is very important for the other lessons that are coming up. We've talked about dependent sources, dependent sources that are linearly controlled. We've talked about series voltage sources, series current sources, the parallel current sources, and parallel voltage sources. We have looked at a couple of examples in the previous lesson. In case you've not seen some of these lessons, please try to check them out. And the most recent lesson before this one, in case you've not checked it, please check it out. We talked about all of these important details. We will need them in this current lesson. We went through this example. We went through some of these examples. We talked about the resistance and resistivity. We talked about Ohm's law. We started talking about Ohm's law. We talked about the conductance and then we checked through some examples together in the last lesson. And then we discussed a short circuit and open circuit. Now we will start by discussing the Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current law says that the sum of all currents entering any node equals the sum of the currents leaving the node. So if you rewrite these or you try to interpret this, it simply means that the algebraic sum of all currents at any node in a circuit equals zero. So uh, this symbol here represents the algebraic sum from n equal to one, depending on the number of currents that we have. So we have n equal to one to n, and then Summation of i of n, which is i of the total number of n's that we have, must be equal to zero. In this particular circuit, you will find out that we have a current flowing from this circuit element right up here. This is an independent voltage source. And then we have an i2 flowing to this circuit element. And then we have i3 flowing out of this node and i4 flowing out of this node downwards. I3 is flowing forward to this particular point, And then we have i5 flowing downward through this circuit element. This is a sign convention we would use for the Kirchhoff's current law. The current exiting the node will be represented with a positive sign, while the current entering the nodes will be represented with negative sign. So if we use this particular convention, what you will notice is that this current I1 let's assume this is a node right at this particular point so you will see that i1 is entering this node i2 is leaving this node okay so if i1 is entering this node it simply means that i1 would be given a negative sign because we said our convention would be negative for currents entering a node and then when currents are leaving the node it is going to be positive so i2 will be positive so if you sum up these two currents around this particular node it will be i2 minus i1 equal to zero that's exactly what we do have here if you pick this other node here you will find out that i4 is actually leaving this node i3 is leaving this node and then the only current entering this node is i2 that is why you find out that i3 will be positive i4 will be positive and i2 will be negative that's why you have i3 plus i4 then plus minus i2 equals zero again there's another node here that we can pay attention to i3 is entering that node so i3 will be negative i5 is leaving the node and i5 will be positive that's why we have i5 plus minus i3 equals zero because when you add all the currents around the particular node together it must give us zero okay 
we have what we call Kirchhoff's voltage law in addition to the Kirchhoff's current law, which states that the sum of voltage drops around any closed path is zero. Okay, this is the interpretation of that statement mathematically. Summation of voltages, depending on the number of voltages represented by N, would be equal to zero. Here is a simple circuit. You can see here we have two closed paths. This is the first closed path. This is the second closed path. And then this is the voltages in the first closed path. We have V1, we have V2, we have V3. In the second closed path, we have V3 and, and V4. Here's the conversion we're going to use when we talk about the KVL, the catch off voltage law. If traversing from positive to negative, terminal clockwise we are going to use a positive sign and if we are traversing from negative to positive terminal clockwise we are going to use a negative sign this is what that means in this case you will find out that the path that we have is traversing from negative terminal of this voltage source to the positive terminal. If we're going to represent V1 mathematically according to KVL Kirchhoff's voltage law this will be minus V1 because you are traversing from negative to positive. If you come to V2 around this circuit element, the voltage across this circuit element, what you will notice is that we have positive sign here and then we have negative sign here. Our path is traversing from positive side of V2 to the negative side of V2. So V2 of voltage two will be represented with a positive sign because we are traversing from positive to negative so this arrow determines the direction and then you can see it's going this way and then when you get here that means you are traversing from positive to negative of v3 so this is also going to be positive that is why we have minus v1 plus v2 plus v3 equal to zero minus v1 plus v2 plus v3 if you look at the second close part what you would have is going to be minus v3 plus v4 equal to zero and that's exactly what we have here so this is a simple example we can quickly look at so that we can get the best out of what we have discussed an electric circuit was built as below use kcl and kvl to solve for unknown current and voltages the first thing you want to find out is how many voltages do we have how many unknown voltages do we have and how many unknown currents do we have okay this is an independent voltage source so this is known for volts we have a current towards moving towards this element two amperes we know that this is one volt we know the voltage across this circuit element this is i2 so from here you can see that we have i2 is unknown i1 is unknown so these are two currents unknown we have I3 is unknown and then we have I4 is unknown. So there are four unknown currents that we would have to find values for. Again, for the voltages, this is one volt which is known. If you move down here, there is a V1 here. So this V1 is not known. This V2 is not known. This V3 is not known. This V4 is not known. So we have four currents that are unknown and then we have four unknown voltages so let's begin to see exactly how we can deal with these we had said that wires are perfect conductors and then they do not store charges they do not store energy so for v2 this is a perfect conductor that simply means that v2 the voltage v2 will be equal to zero because this is a perfect conductor it doesn't store any charges it doesn't store any energy so there is no voltage on this conductor across this conductor here so v2 will be equal to zero again the same analysis goes for v4 v4 would also be equal to zero now having said that we can then go ahead and apply kvl to the two close parts we have a close part this is a first close part this is another close part here okay so if we use the second close part and then we use that to find our kvl what would it look like okay so if we draw a close part here moving in this clockwise direction what we will find is that this is going to be plus v1 right it becomes plus v1 and then we keep going up plus v2 we keep coming because we're traversing from plus to negative of v1 from plus to negative of v2 so it's going be, so it becomes plus v1 plus v2 plus v3 because we are moving from plus to negative of v3 minus v4 
equal to zero when you sum all of them together it will be equal to zero according to kvl we do know v2 is equal to zero we know v v4 is also equal to zero so what we are left with will just be plus v1 plus v3 equal to zero and if you rearrange that it simply means your v1 will be equal to minus v3 or your v3 would be equal to minus v1 that is exactly what we have what we have here okay let's take it a step further now how do we find expressions or equations that connect our current together we pick this note first of all we said that the algebraic sum of all currents around the particular node must be equal to zero so two amperes is entering this node and we said when current is entering a node we represent it with a negative sign or negative polarity when current is leaving a node we represent it with positive polarity so two amperes is entering this node i1 is leaving this node i2 is leaving this node so if we are going to represent that mathematically using kcl catch-off's catch current law it becomes minus two plus i1 plus i2 equal to zero that simply means i1 plus i2 would be equal to zero that's what it simply means okay now before we go ahead and do that you will find out here that if we use the concept of the long parameter model you will find out that the current going through voltage v2 from this terminal i1 current i1 going through voltage v2 cannot pass through v3 v3 is an open circuit this terminal is open okay and when we have a, an open terminal it simply means it, does, it cannot allow the flow of current so i1 will be equal to zero because there cannot be current flowing through this particular terminal okay the same thing with i3 this is an open circuit so there cannot be any current coming from this particular voltage so no current is passing through here no current is coming from here because this is an open circuit and we had said that this is a perfect conductor it doesn't store any charges it doesn't store any current so so these currents are null that's why they are equal to zero again we can easily say that from this particular node we can easily say that the current leaving the node is i4 the one entering the node from the right hand side is i3 and then the one entering the current entering the node from the top is i2 i3 is already equal to zero so we can easily say that the algebraic sum of the currents would be minus i2 minus i3 plus i4 equal to zero since i3 is equal to zero already we can then say that minus i2 plus i4 is equal to zero hence we can say that i2 is equal to i4 and that is exactly what we do have here i2 is equal to i4 again if you use the node at the top we can easily say since we know that our i1 is equal to zero and the current entering this node is going to be is two amps so we can say minus two plus i2 plus i1 is equal to zero minus two plus i2 will be equal to zero since i1 is already zero we already said i1 is zero so we're left with i2 equals two amperes if i2 is equal to two amperes and we know that i2 is equal to i4 then both of them are equal to two amperes this is very important then how do we find v1 finding v1 is now going to be very straightforward since we already know the values of the current and some of the other voltages if we carry out the kvl analysis around this closed path here it becomes minus v1 plus one minus four because we are traversing from negative v1 to positive v1 positive v positive one volt to negative one volt negative four volt to positive four volt to positive four volt and then plus positive one volt to negative one volt at the top here so this becomes minus v1 plus one minus four plus two so plus one minus four is minus three minus three plus one is minus two all minus v1 so this simply means that our v1 will therefore be equal to 
minus 2 volt. Just simple arithmetic operations there will show that V1 is equal to minus 2 volt using KVL. So this is how to analyze this simple circuit. We have another example to quickly analyze. Example 2. Use KCL and KVL to solve for unknown current and voltages. Again, the first thing you want to look for is the number of unknown currents we have and the number of unknown voltages that we have. Let's start with the current. You can see we have I3 is unknown, I4 is unknown, I7 is unknown, I8 is unknown. So we have four currents around this closed part that are unknown. Again, let's go to the second closed part. Okay, we have two amperes here. Then we have I5 is unknown. We have I6 is unknown. So you will find out that only two currents are unknown in the second closed part. Altogether, 2 plus 4 gives us 6. So there are 6 unknown currents that we are going to look for. Again, let's try to find out how many unknown voltages we have. Across the first closed part, we have V2 and then we have V1 and then we have, I think, just those two voltages. So there are two unknown voltages here. And then in the second closed part, we have, there's 5 volt here, there's 2 volt here, there is 3 volt here, and there is V1, only V1. Okay, so all together in the entire circuit, there are two unknown voltages, V1 and V2. So we have 8 unknowns, 6 unknown currents, 2 unknown voltages. Now, how do we solve this problem? We're going to have to find current equations around all the nodes that we have using KCL. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 nodes. So that simply means using KCL, we can find 6 current equations. Again, we have 2 closed parts. Using KVL, we can find 2 equations around these 2 closed parts. Altogether, we would, we would find our 8 equations and use those equations to find the 8 unknowns. If we go ahead and find those, this is what we're going to have. So around this closed part, we have, using KVL, we have minus V2 minus 9 minus V1 plus 11 equal to 0. And that's exactly what we have here. Minus V2 minus 9 minus V1 plus 11 equal to 0. If you check the second closed part, you'll find out that we have plus V1 plus 5 plus 3, plus 2, equal to 0. And that's exactly what we have here. Plus V1, plus 5, plus 3, plus 2, equal to 0. So for the closed part, we have found the two voltage equations that we need. Again, we will go to the terminals. The, we will go to the nodes that we have and find all the current equations. Let us start with the one at the top here. Current entering is 6 amperes. Current leaving the node is I3. Another current coming right from the bottom is minus, minus 3 amperes. So total current leaving is going to be I3. I3 is positive. So I3 minus 6 amperes plus 3 amperes would be equal to 0 around that node. So you can see I3 minus 6 amperes minus minus 3 gives us plus eventually because we have minus 3, current, 3 amperes flowing there. So we have I3 minus 6 amperes plus I3 equal to 0. On the second node, which is the one right here, you see that what is entering is I3, what is leaving is 2 amperes, I4 is also leaving, going downwards. So we can say that I4, because it's leaving this node, plus 2 amperes, which is also leaving this node, minus I3, which is coming into this particular node according to our sign convention. So that gives us 0. Okay, that is equation 5 here. And then we can work on this other node, this node here. Here, 2 amperes is entering the node. 1 ampere is leaving the node. That becomes I5 plus 1 minus 2 equal to 0. Again, let's move on to the other node here. You can see that current I1 is entering the node. 10 ampere is leaving the node. And then I6 is leaving the node. If you carry out a KCL analysis around this node, then we have minus 1 plus 10 plus I6 equal to 0. So that becomes I6 plus 10 minus 1 equal to 0. And that's exactly what we have here. 
I6 plus 10 minus 1 equal to 0. If you rearrange it, that's exactly what we're going to have. Again, we can move to this node, and then you find out that I6 is entering this node, I4 is entering this node. Using the same KCL, you find out that this becomes minus I6 minus I4 plus I7 equal to 0. And that's exactly what we're going to have here. I7 minus I6 minus I4 equal to 0 if you quickly rearrange that, okay? And then if you come to the last node, you find out that I8 is leaving the node. I minus 3 amperes is also leaving the node and I7 is entering the node. I7 would be negative, so we have minus I7. I8 is leaving the node, that, that becomes plus I8. And then minus 3 amperes is leaving the node, that becomes plus minus 3. So we have minus I7 plus I8 minus 3 amperes equals 0. So I8 minus I7 minus 3 equals 0. That's what we're going to have. So that's exactly what we have. I8 minus I7 plus minus 3 amperes equal to 0 as equation 4. Okay. So these are all the equations. We have the 6 current equations and 2 voltage equations. All we'll need to do is just quickly arithmetically solve for the 8 unknowns. And this has presented itself as pretty easy. Here we have only one unknown in equation 3. I3 is the only unknown here. So if you just carry out arithmetic additions and subtractions here, you get the value of I3. The same thing goes with I4. Since we already know our I3, you put I, the value of I3 here, you get your I4. Now we know I3, we know I4. If you go to any of the other equations, you will find a place where you can find I5. In equation 7, you can find in our equation 7, we can find our I5. We can find I5 because we only have one unknown here. And that becomes I5 equal to a particular value. So we know I3, we know I, I4, we know I5. All right. In equation 8, too, you find out that there is only one unknown, which is I6. We can easily find our I6 from equation 8. You just make I6 the subject of the expression here, and you find your I6. So we know four currents right now. Then you can go back to equation 4. The value of... The value of, we already found our I7. Did we find I7? We already found our I4. So you put the value of I4 that we know here. So the only unknown we will then have is going to be I7. And we already also, we also found the value of I6. So you put I4 and I6 in here, you find your I7. And then you go back to equation 4, put your value of I7 in equation 4 and then we find our and our i8 and before you know what's happening we have all the six currents that are missing the same thing goes for equation 1 and equation 2 for the kvl if you look at equation 1 we only have v1 unknown so 5 plus 3 plus 2 gives us about 10 so you know our v1 will be equal to minus 10 volts if you rearrange that and bring 10 to the other side here once you know your v1 you can put that in your equation 2 and then you can easily find your v2 and you find your v2 to be equal to 12 volts okay so these are the values that we have v1 is minus 10 volt v2 is 12 volt i3 is 3 amperes i4 is 1 ampere i5 is 1 ampere i6 is minus 9 amperes I7 is minus 8 amperes, I8 is minus 5 amperes. All of them we obtain from these 8 equations that we do have here. This brings us to the end of our lesson for this session. I do hope you have enjoyed this particular teaching. I want to encourage you to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I also want to encourage you as much as possible to subscribe to this, to this channel and click on the notification button so you can get updated videos even before the session days i want to believe that along the line it is possible that you have one or two questions please don't hesitate to put those questions in the comment section i'm going to try to respond to all of those questions as much as i can and if you have other concepts that you want to share about this course about this particular session and this 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 video do it let us know what you think by making those comments in the comment section once again remember to subscribe see you in the next session